Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a fluid transport practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps a lot. So the problem in, that we're going to be solving today goes as follows. So water flows through a curiously looking pipe as seen in the picture. Uh, so pipe A, which is the upper pipe, has a resistance of 2 times 10 to the 7 in resistance units and a cross-sectional area of 3 times 10 to a negative 4 meters square, while pipe B, which is the uh, lower branch, has a resistance of 1 times 10 to the 7 uh, resistance units and a cross-sectional area of 6 times 10 to a negative 4 meters square. The current flows in the direction shown in the figure, which is left to right. So the first thing that we have to answer is what is the ratio of the current um, A to current B? That is to say, what is current A divided by current B? So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. So I have a little picture over here and I have all of the information that was given. And the first thing that I have to find is this ratio. So first of all, let's just analyze what's happening over here. So we have water coming in like this. And then what's happening is that uh, on this quote unquote curiously looking pipe is that the water is uh, splitting up. So you have a, an incoming current and some of it, you know, goes up like this and then goes back. Some of it goes down like this. And then at the end, it just goes back together and it flows out of the uh, curiously looking pipe. Now, a lot of people um, on this quiz, I graded this quiz, so I know what happened. A lot of people just straight up said, well, if the current splits, then surely it's half and half. And if it's 50% and 50%, then that means that it's equal. So the ratio is equal to one problem solved. And, um, you know, maybe under some circumstances that might be true, but certainly not under the circumstances. And another thing is that, um, you know, in the seven series, you always want to be sure that you can, um, you know, use physics in order to, you know, uh, defend your answer or like justify your answer. So just saying that it's 50-50, therefore this ratio is equal to one is not going to work. Uh, but let's just go ahead and see what's gonna work. So um, I'm asked the thing that I'm asked to do is compare this pipe with this pipe. So what some students did was try to use their Bernoulli equation, say, you know, from here to here, either like this or like this, and both of these are uh, unfortunately not correct. When we're using our Bernoulli equation, um, that is a steady state flow equation. And if you go from A to B, then that doesn't really work for Bernoulli because you're crossing flow lines and A and B have different flows. So whenever they were using their Bernoulli equation, they would essentially get stuck at the part of minus IR because they would write minus IR and then they just wouldn't know what to do after that. Like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna write this I or this I? So they just basically got stuck and that, and they got stuck using the equation that way because it's not meant to be used that way. The thing that we can do, however, is uh, we can use our Bernoulli equation from point one to point two and that is completely valid because even though the current splits in the middle, it comes back together, uh, which means that this current and this current are the same. And if the current is the same and you're within the same flow line, which you are, then you can use Bernoulli. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we want to use our Bernoulli equation going from point one to point two. Now, here's the tricky thing. Uh, there are two ways in which you can go from one to two. You can go through pipe A, which is the top pipe, or you can go through pipe B. If you go through the upper pipe like this, then, uh, basically what you're gonna get is delta P, 
you don't have a change in height, so that goes away. You don't have a change in area, so that goes away. You don't have a bump in the middle, so that goes away. But you do have a certain resistance, so delta P from 1 to 2 is equal to negative IR. Now, because you went through the top, then this is IA, RA. Now, if you decide to go uh, through, really hope this is how you pronounce it in English, uh, by B, then you're going to get the same Bernoulli equation, except you went through the bottom, so this would be negative IB, RB, like this. Now, on both of the cases, uh, whether you went up or down, you're basically analyzing the same delta P, which is pressure here, uh, you know, pressure here minus pressure here. So on both of these cases, even though you went a different route, this delta P is exactly the same, right? Because it's a state function. It doesn't matter, you know, what path you took so long as it's a valid path. So if you combine these two equations together, you're going to get IB, RB, the negatives cancel out, and then you can just divide IA divided by IB is just equal to RB divided by RA, which is equal to um, 1 times 10 to the 7 divided by 2 times 10 to the 7. So this is equal to 1 half final answer. And there we go. So this is our final answer to part A. This basically means that uh, two IAs make up one IB, which is interesting. Um, so now let's just go ahead and solve for part B. Part B is asking, um, what is the ratio of speed VA of the water uh, to the speed of VV of the water? So now instead of asking us for uh, the flows, they are asking what is VA divided by VV, like this. So in order to do that, what I think uh, we can do is we already have this ratio going on. So what we can do is just start with this. And then we can apply our definition in which I is just equal to area times velocity. So if I apply my definition, this is area A, velocity A, area B, velocity V is equal to one half. So what I wanna get is just this. So VA over VV is equal to AV divided by two times area A. So this is area of B is six, times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 2 times um, 3 times 10 to the negative 4. So this is uh, 1. This is equal to 1. And there we go, final answer. So this is our final answer for part B. So it was just basically expanding on this answer and then applying our definition. Now, obviously, if you got the right ratio on part A and you did the right procedure over here, you would get a different answer, but you would still get full credit. I graded this quiz and I gave full credit for a you know, correct procedure. So now for part C, if the current I2 flowing out of the pipe is observed to be 8.6, so I2 is equal to 8.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Then what is I1, IA, and IB respectively? Okay, so basically they are giving us one of the currents and now we have to find the other three. So let's just go ahead and try to work out a continuity equation from this. So let's see. Um, what can we figure out from this problem? Well, what we can figure out is, first of all, I1 is actually very easy because uh, we know that because of continuity, what comes into the pipe has to go out. 
So I is the incoming flow and, um, and two, I'm sorry, one is the incoming flow and two is the outgoing flow. So if uh, 8.6 times 10 to the negative four meters cubed per second is going out, then that is what's going into the pipe because otherwise you're losing mass and you do need you know conservation of mass. So I want is actually just the same quantity. So let me just copy what we have. I want because of continuity has to be 8.6 times 10 to a negative four as well. And I think a lot of students just straight up realized this. This wasn't very hard. The only thing is that a lot of people uh, would also want to say that this is 8.6 and this is 8.6. Um, that is to say IA is 8.6 and IB is 8.6 and that would be actually wrong because this, you know, this flow is uh, splitting up. So the thing that we are actually going to be needing is First of all, how is it splitting up? Well, even though uh, this is not 8.6 and this is not 8.6, what we do know because of continuity is that they need to add up to 8.6. So let me just write that down. So this is IA plus IB needs to be equal to 8.6 times 10 to the negative four, like this because this flow plus this flow has to be equal to this flow. They kind of like go back and add up to 8.6. And the other thing that we know from our answer to part A is this equation over here, or this, you know, this ratio or this equation over here, which is that uh, two IAs make up one IB. So now that we have this information, this is just straightforward because uh, we have two equations and two things that we don't know. So I'm just gonna go ahead and substitute um, over here. So two IAs make up one IB. So this is IA plus two IAs, which is IB is equal to 8.6 times 10 to the negative four. This means that IA equal to 8.6 times 10 to the negative 4. So IA is just 8.6 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 3. And this is equal to uh, 8.6 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 3. So 2.8, um, let's see. Yeah, so two point, wait, did I divide? Yep, 2.86, 2.86 times 10 to the negative four, and then units is uh, meters cube divided by seconds over here. There we go. So that's it, that's IA, and now that we have IA, then we can just put it over here and solve for IB, right? So IB is just equal to 8.6 minus 2.86 times 10 to the negative four. So this is going to be equal to 8.6 minus 2.86, 5.74. Times 10 to a negative 4 meters cube seconds, final answer. So let me just copy. So this is my final answer over here. And as you can see, if you add this up, they do add up to the, uh, so the, the total flow, which is 8.6 splits 2.8 this way, 5.74 this way, and then they go back together and they add up to the original 8.6. Um, 
so everything looks good. So now for part four, they are asking if pipe A was extended to be twice as long as it was in the figure, while maintaining the same resistance per unit length, what would be the ratio um, IA over IBB? Okay, so for part four, um, the uh, resistance per unit length stays the same. So just by definition, total resistance is resistance per unit length times length over here. Now, for this part of the problem, what they're doing is they're taking this length and they are multiplying it by two because now it's twice as long. So um, the R, oh, the RA for part four of this problem is going to be twice as much as the original total resistance of A, you know, part one of this problem. Essentially, because if this stays the same and this gets multiplied by two, then the total resistance on the pipe is uh, being multiplied by two. So now um, this is twice as resistive as before. So in our original problem that we had over here, our ratio was, um, RB divided by RA, so the original one was IA divided by IB is equal to RB divided by RA. So this is what we got from using Bernoulli. So the only thing that's going to change is that now on problem four, uh, this is twice as resistive. So now this would be twice as resistive. So now the ratio, instead of being the original one half that we got, which was our original answer, because we have an extra two over here, that would be one half times one half. So our new answer would be one fourth. And this is how doubling the length would affect this ratio over here. So anyways, I, uh, this is the end of the problem. It's a four part problem. It's a kind of a long quiz, uh, but we're done at this point. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, uh, you know, write it on the comments, questions, corrections, everything you want to write. Uh, we do appreciate your feedback and I'll see you guys on the next video.